Good morning. I'm Mike Rivera, Berks County Commissioner and the 2024 President of the County Commissioners Association of Pennsylvania. I'd like to thank all the media representatives and supporters joining us here today to discuss a very dire situation. We have come here today to call on the General Assembly and the Shapiro administration to address the critical need for increased county mental health funding in the state budget. May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and it has been amazing to see all the strides we have made as a society in creating awareness around the importance of mental health. Every day, we are breaking down the stigma surrounding mental health illness, and people are understanding the need for increased services. But we are at a critical crossroads in Pennsylvania when it comes to mental health services, and that should concern every single person living in the Commonwealth. No matter who you are or where you live, I am certain that you are someone that you know has been helped by community mental health services. For years, counties have been struggling to maintain community-based services such as outpatient treatment for adults and children, crisis intervention, school services, support for individuals leaving state facilities, and treatment, community consultation, and prevention services, and so much more. We have seen an explosion in the need for services, but we haven't seen a significant increase in funding. That unbalanced ratio must be addressed. In order to avoid a complete collapse of the system, counties are calling for a significant investment for community mental health services for the 2024 2025 fiscal year, an increase of $20 million above current funding levels. The investment counties are calling for in the coming fiscal year will help stabilize the system and stop the bleeding while we develop a long-term plan for further increases over the next five to 10 years to develop a strong system that will benefit the entire Commonwealth. And that investment must go directly into the community mental health system, regardless of any other funding directly to specific areas of mental health, such as school mental health. We do not have time for political posturing. We cannot afford to bicker or play games with something as important as mental health of our population. I'm just going to stop here a moment to let them go by, and then we'll continue. Go ahead. <laughs> I will do that. Okay. Wait till he's gone and then we'll continue here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. We do not have time for political posturing, and we cannot afford to bicker or play games with something as important as the mental health of our population. While awareness is a wonderful tool, we must eventually turn that awareness into action. It is absolutely crucial <clears throat> that the General Assembly and the administration step up to support counties and ultimately the residents of Pennsylvania. I would now like to introduce Annie Strike, the Mental Health Administrator for Cumberland and Perry Counties, for further outline, who will further outline the struggles counties are facing having to meet the mental health needs. Annie? Thank you. Good morning. My name is Annie Streit, and I'm the Mental Health Administrator for Cumberland and Perry Counties. Our mission is to serve individuals with serious mental illness and to support families who desire help for their children experiencing emotional and behavioral difficulties. We provide both mental health treatment services, and equally important, we provide supportive services that are not funded through other means. These services are services such as crisis intervention, warm line services for individuals who are not in immediate crisis, but who need someone to talk to to avoid a crisis event, and residential services for adults and with serious mental illness who need additional help to avoid hospitalization or rehospitalization. Additionally, we provide prevention services for children and adolescents and families who are experiencing behavioral difficulties who are identified as needing additional help. 
We've seen such an increase during the last few years. We've struggled to retain workers in our programs because they've found other career opportunities that have paid better and often provide an easier schedule than working in programs that need 24-7 coverage. Our providers have worked very hard to keep programs open, fully recognizing how difficult it is to operate a program with barely enough people to adequately support individuals with mental illness. Some providers have requested to the number of individuals receiving services and programs to focus on serving those that they can, even while struggling with staffing. Unfortunately, we've seen a significant turnover of staff. We have positions that have been vacant for over a year. We've also observed a greater number of individuals who desire and need mental health services. This is particularly difficult for our residential services. In Cumberland and Perry counties, we have a total of 85 residential slots. All of our residential slots are full, and we have a wait list of almost 85. So why do people depend on these services? The reasons vary from person to person, but for some people, they struggle to manage their mental illness successfully. They forget to take their medicine. Sometimes people simply need someone to check in to make sure that they're taking good care of themselves. Sometimes they benefit from a coaching person to help them accomplish tasks like laundry, grocery shopping, and maintaining a good healthy routine. Sometimes people struggle with thought disorders and deal with delusions and hallucinations even though they are taking their medications as prescribed by their doctors. Other community stakeholders rely on our services to build trust and maintain hope of recovery and resilience. So what happens to people who are on the wait lists? Where do they go? Let me share. For those receiving inpatient care, they wait, thus clogging up our ability to get people into inpatient treatment, into that appropriate level of care. Some wait in the emergency department, causing frustration and difficulty with transition plans. Some end up homeless and in shelters, and some end up in jail. The number of individuals with mental illness in jail has risen sharply during the last four years. I will comment that this week alone, I've been in contact with someone living in their car and the family of a person who recently was incarcerated. Some people on wait lists end up cycling in and out of hospitals, shelters, and jail. The Cumberland County 911 staff have shared that although the overall call volume for 911 has increased by 4.1%, the call volume that they code as behavioral health has increased by 10.4%. To me, this very clearly speaks to unmet needs in our communities. Finally, Finally, and so tragically, some people pass away, either due to unmet medical needs or suicide. Many of our counties have very active suicide prevention task forces. Cumberland and Perry County also has a very active suicide prevention task force. In 2023, the rate of suicide between January and April in Cumberland County was eight. This year, in 2024, between January and April, that same statistic has doubled, more than doubled, to 17. Again, this very clearly speaks to, I believe, unmet need. Last year, Cumberland and Perry counties initiated a thoughtful review of what may occur if the mental health office decided to cut services and balance our budget. We hosted multiple town hall meetings and talked about a ripple effect that we believe would be felt across other systems. We believe our homeless population would increase more. Our jail population of those with serious mental illnesses would rise even more. The numbers of children and families served by children and youth in juvenile probation would also rise. And the number of 911 calls would continue to rise. 
We routinely now hear from families who ask why it takes so long to get the needed help. If adequate funds were available, we would first address our existing workforce crisis. We would ensure that there would be enough staff to adequately serve people in need of help. We would also ensure that their compensation would be competitive for the work that was performed. If we are successful in stabilizing existing services, we would then look to appropriate expansion to meet the growing demand of need in our communities. Last year, the legislature approved the governor's budget. Counties were awarded an additional 20 million across the Commonwealth. Please allow me to say first say thank you for the attention on the mental health needs in all of our communities. But also let me share the realities of what this means. In Cumberland and Perry counties, this year we are projecting a $1.8 million deficit for the current fiscal year. This is after we received an additional $352,000 as our portion of the $20 million provided through Governor Shapiro's budget last year. We are not alone. There are other counties experiencing the same struggle. What will happen if cuts are made? Counties cannot continue to offset the expenses for services where increased expenses are outpacing additional funds. I've just shared our barriers and our challenges. If service cuts are made, the tragic increase of unmet needs will continue to worsen. It's quite easy to turn a blind eye and say, this doesn't impact my family, until it does. Think on that for a second. Until it does, and when it does, families often express anger and frustration directed at the counties. Sometimes they're upset enough to call a legislator. We thank families when they contact their legislators. It's our desire to help people. It's consistent with our mission. As adequate funding continues, we will, if inadequate funding continues, we will be forced to make decisions to cut services and watch the tragic aftermath impacting our local citizens' lives and their families. Thank you for allowing me to share. Thank you, Annie. Good morning. My name is John Adams. I'm the District Attorney of Berks County. I also serve as a board member for the Pennsylvania District Attorneys Association. I am here today to join our colleagues at CCAP in urging our state lawmakers to help us combat the mental health crisis in our counties. District attorneys in Pennsylvania are increasingly concerned with the growing need for behavioral health services in our respective counties. Our law enforcement officers report that they are encountering more and more individuals in need of mental health services. In fact, the Pennsylvania Department of Corrections estimates that more than 35% of those incarcerated require some behavioral health treatment. Unmet behavioral health needs also drive up the population of our county prisons. There's no way around it. The mental health crisis in our counties is a serious public safety concern. In February, PDAA sent a letter to Governor Josh Shapiro asking for resources to address this public safety concern and pledging our willingness to find a solution. District attorneys work closely with behavioral health specialists to address the mental health crises in our counties. Many prosecutors throughout the state have embraced diversion programs for nonviolent crimes where individuals can enroll in a judicially supervised mental health and substance use disorder treatment regimen in lieu of being incarcerated. Diversion programs reduce recidivism, strengthen public safety, and improve the quality of life for participants and usually at a much lower cost than incarceration. However, 
these programs only work if there are resources available. Counties need additional funding, more collaboration with state agencies, better integration behavioral health and substance use disorder treatment, and more local assistance. When resources are constrained, incarcerated individuals with high treatment needs often extend their prison stays waiting for basic services. All of us, district attorneys, county commissioners, mental health providers, we all need to work together to solve the mental health crisis in our counties. Our friends and neighbors who are experiencing mental health issues deserve our help. This is a public safety concern that cannot be ignored. Every day when you pick up a newspaper or turn on the TV, you read about a tragedy or a potential tragedy that was committed by someone experiencing a mental health crisis. Recently, a pastor's sermon in Western Pennsylvania was interrupted when an armed man pulled out his gun during the church service and tried shooting the pastor. Thankfully, he did not. But it's another example. We need more mental health resources to help those in need now, before someone else is injured or killed. Thank you. And I will now turn this over to Warden Leslie Lovebridge from Indiana County. Thank you, District Attorney. Good morning, my name is Leslie Loveridge. I am warden of the Indiana County Jail and we are a class six county. The jail houses up to 256 incarcerated men and women, both pretrial and sentenced. I am also a crisis intervention specialist at The Open Door, a local behavioral health treatment center that specializes in mental health, co-occurring and poly substance use disorders. I have 30 years in experience in each field, which allows me to present a unique perspective from each discipline. I am here today to discuss how mental health impacts not only my facility, but corrections across the Commonwealth. First, I would like to offer some statistics regarding my facility to illustrate how our jail has been impacted by the lack of funding for community mental health services. In 2018, we had three to five individuals diagnosed with a serious mental illness, such as schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, major depressive disorder, or post-traumatic stress disorder. Today, we are housing more than 30. We have an additional 65, 65 individuals who have been identified as being diagnosed or treated for a mental health disorder in the past year. To put that in perspective, a staggering 56% of the population of the Indiana County Jail is being treated for a mental health disorder. There are many individuals that have a co-occurring substance use disorder. 88% of our current population have reported having a substance use disorder. In Indiana County, we work together across systems as a team. The courts, the district attorney, probation, local law enforcement, mental health, and drug and alcohol providers work together daily to identify, divert, and respond to those experiencing mental health and substance use disorder issues. Together, we have created a litany of programs specifically designed to keep those with mental health issues out of the jail. We want to provide our citizens a more appropriate level of care in a less restrictive setting. I say this because despite all of the effort, we still have an astonishing number that remain incarcerated. In just the first three months of this year, our jail provided a huge amount of behavioral health care. 274 mental health appointments with our two licensed practical counselors, 252 psychiatric visits, seven suicide watches, 16 emergency room visits, five hospital admissions. I think it is important to talk about the impacts this has on our jails. Many community members have no experience with the jail 
and what's happening inside isn't something most people think about. Pennsylvania's jail system was created to be a short-term holding before conviction or for sentences under two years. Never before were people committed to jails in such overwhelming need of both behavioral and physical health care. No one anticipated that we would need such an extensive medical department, a team of treatment professionals, social workers, behavioral and developmental programs, mental health services, teachers, aging services, competency restoration programs, psychiatrists, and so much more. Jails were not meant to be mental health facilities, substance use treatment centers, or hospitals. Today, we are all three. Jails are not designed in a way that promoted healing and restoration. They were designed for security and community safety. Corrections has been facing a staffing crisis since at least 2021. Corrections officers are working 16-hour shifts, day in and day out, with little time off, and sadly, no end in sight. If staff stay in this profession, they are faced with high rates of burnout, frustration, exhaustion, sleep deprivation, and their own mental health issues because of the long hours working inside the walls. When we talk about mental health, it's not only the incarcerated population that has increased needs. Correctional staff are no longer expected to be just corrections officers or administrators. We are social workers, medical professionals, counselors, trauma specialists, accountants, teachers, and mentors. We are expected to wear many different hats. Is it any wonder that the average life expectancy of a corrections officer is 59 years old? The bottom line is, corrections professionals want to do the right thing. We do not want those with mental health issues housed in our facilities, but where else do they have to go? There are so often no other alternatives for safe and appropriate housing and care. Existing mental health facilities are being closed, lowering the number of bed space for residential, forensic, and geriatric services. As community members are unable to get timely and appropriate treatment, escalating behavior leaves law enforcement and the criminal justice system no safe alternative but incarceration. It is not uncommon currents for me to work at my evening shift at the crisis hotline, determine that hospitalization is needed for a consumer, take them to the local hospital, only to arrive at the jail in the morning to see that consumer that I recommended for inpatient commitment is now an inmate. I begin the process all over again, this time from a correctional setting, using different mechanisms to attempt to find some solution. The person will remain in the jail's custody until a suitable alternative is found. And so it goes. The cycle of harm will continue until we rebuild Pennsylvania's crumbling infrastructure. Until then, jails will continue to provide the best possible care for those in our custody. Care, custody, and control. Safety for the community and the incarcerated. It's what we do. At this time, I'd like to turn it back over to CCAP President Michael Rivera. Thank you. Thank you, Warden Loveridge. So, after hearing everyone speak, I hope you come away from today knowing two things are clearly evident. One, counties provide some of the most important mental health services in the Commonwealth. And two, that system is in dire need of support from the General Assembly and the administration. Counties have done everything we can to make sure mental health services are operating properly despite a giant gap in funding versus demand. It is way past time for counties to get the funding help we need so we can better help and serve those in our communities. The time for kicking the can down the road another year is over. The time for stopgap and piecemeal solutions is over. The time for real, meaningful action is now. In closing, I'd like to again thank all of our speakers today and thank all of you for attending today's event. If you're interested in follow-up questions, we'll be available for one-on-one -on -one interviews for the next five to 10 minutes. Thank you and have a great day.
Thank you. Thank you.